Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another, let me get that out of the way there, another Minecraft discussion. My name is Kimberly Quinn, and I am thrilled to be here in this gorgeousness on this day to have a talk with you about, <clears throat> you know, letting go of old comforts, typically unhealthy or outgrown comforts, so that you can, you know, be free to let more, you know, but let the good stuff in, more good stuff. It doesn't, you know, unhealthy, there's a total unhealthy stuff we need to let go of, but there's also just, again, things we've outgrown that we just don't need anymore. But when we're cruising around on autopilot, you know, uh, we're just going to keep attracting the same old stuff into our lives. I just have to say, look at this gorgeousness. It's so wonderfully distracting. I love it. it <clears throat> the November look, you know, it, it's just, uh, it's like it's like the crayon box. My my uh my bestie from St. Mike's talks about the about this time of the year. We both love George Winston too, so it's reminding us of that. But also that it's the color burnt sienna in the Crayola box. And that's exactly what November is. It's burnt sienna. So that's wild. Okay, so anyway, I was listening, I'm inspired by a couple of people indirectly, directly and indirectly. So Aaron Dottie, I feel like Gosh, I'd love to have lunch with that guy. Then just for, we probably would talk endlessly just for hours and hours. I feel like we are kindred, just naturally very kindred spirits. We just are so much alike. Oh, also, we're both Fast Mind Club members. We've got that in common, too. So I was listening to him, and he had been listening to Abraham Hicks. So it's wild that once you kind of get to this level of consciousness or awareness or just, you know, becoming super aware of your life and being receptive and being sort of just aware of all the moving parts and what's going on. Yeah, it's amazing how you just become incredibly in tune with other people that are saying the same thing and that are like in the in the same sort of wavelength with you because he's, I listen to her too and he's listening to her and now we're all, in, you know what I mean? Even though we don't know each other, we're just kind of talking about the same thing. And <clears throat> the example that Aaron used, that Abraham used, that he listened to, was as far as detachment and how, how we are naturally inclined to these things, he used the example of a bobber, like a fishing bobber. <clears throat> and though I'm not a fisher person, uh, I was when I was eight. I mean, not really. I, it was just the summer, like any kid does, right? But I got, um, I, 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 have a, I do know what it is because I did fish when I was eight for bullheads in a lake in Wisconsin. Go figure that one out. They were actually very delicious, like little mini catfish prickly and and stuff we used to catch a million of them because the lake was overpopulated we put them in a canoe and then just eat them like crazy so anyway where was i going with that okay so the bobber thing so i know what that means like so naturally when you cast the rod and then there's the bobber and then the then there's the fishing line underneath and a hook right so when the so when the fish attaches it obviously pulls on the bobber and sinks the bobber underneath the lake or, or let's say ocean for another example so the bobber without the tug and the attachment is already on the top of the ocean doing its bobber thing it's when the fish pulls and attaches that it goes underneath and so aaron's example which he actually got from abraham which makes perfect sense to me is that the bobber on its own is already light and free and doing its thing on top of the ocean, also in a mindful way. It's also riding the wave gently and easily and naturally because there is no attachment to anything else, okay? And I have to say attachment is, is like the unhealthy part. It doesn't mean we don't care about people. Of course we do. It's the attachment. So we can also be attached to comforts, behaviors, dynamics. You don't think of a re relationship dynamics. You know, some people continue to attract people who don't really want them. Well, that's why, that's because you don't want you. I mean, that's that's what the energy you're putting out there. We go through a million other examples. Come on, G, get out of there. Hey, come on. That's a bear trail. Come on, let's go. All right, so anyway, so to, and, and what we don't realize, sometimes we're looking for enlightenment. Yeah, it sounds so Buddhist. Well, it is Buddhist. It's also a lot of other cultures and religions. But let's say looking for you know, that, you know, pure kind of loving feeling and also authentic confidence and authentic compassion and authentic acceptance and all these things. And we're kind of looking for them like they're out here somewhere or, you know, the idea of heaven being up in the clouds and, you know, with a man and a white beard sitting on a throne or something like that. I don't even know. But the thing is that it's all right here, just like that bobber. We have that naturally. So it's not like, it's not that we're trying to acquire something 
that's outside of us. We're, it's more of an uncovering or a revealing, kind of like like pulling the, not like pulling the blanket off, I guess a little bit, but more like an archeological dig. It's already there. All this authentic confidence who you really want to be. You want to be able to kind of stride into a room. We're not talking about cocky because that's the ego and that's exactly the opposite actually. We're talking about walking into a room with authentic charisma, authentic charisma, not having that need for external approval anymore, not ha you know being attached to what other people think of us, not being attached to um, being a, like an achievement junkie, all right? Now, it's one thing to do things because we authentically want to. I mean, God, I'm so, I have, right now in my head, I have so many creative things that I want to do, and it's a matter of like trying to fit them all in just because I want to. And you know, if I hit the lottery tomorrow, I'd still be doing it all. Though we've talked about that. I, I won't hit the lottery since I don't play the lottery. I'm not judging anybody, but it's gambling. I don't want to go down that road. It just isn't good. It wouldn't be a good fit for me. It just wouldn't be a good fit, fit for me. But anyways, we don't realize often we're trying to, we like, we try to look for it out here and look for it in other people. And certainly people can be channeled through. The universe definitely talks through us or God or source, however you want to label. Um, definitely. I mean, it's happened literally every day of my life. Somebody is ch saying something I need to hear that's, you know, straight from, you know, the, 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 the divine connection we're all, we're all connected to. Uh, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when we're trying to look for things outside of ourselves. It just isn't about that. It's already here. So if you want to win from within, that's where you've got to look. And you've got to picture that bobber because that is such a good uh, metaphor. You're already the bobber. I'm already the bobber. We already know what to do. We just have to uncover it. We don't have to acquire it and kind of add tools to the box. The tools are already in the box. We just have to open the box and use the tools. Not go buy more, you know, that it's, it's, it's already there. So picture the bobber on the ocean, riding the wave, doing its thing naturally and, and place in that visual, whatever it is you've been looking for outside yourself and realize and picture it being like on the bobber, maybe even the words like authentic confidence or something and picture that bobber detached from what's underneath. Okay. Let the fishy go and picture it just riding the wave and bobbing peacefully just on top of the lake or ocean or or uh, beaver pond, which is where I am right now. And the beavers have been busy at work. And you can see this. They've covered the, the trail and, and they're nibbling on their little sticks and everything. Okay, that's it. Detach and be free. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from the beautiful beaver pond and the notch in northern Vermont. Have a mindful day.